G'day guys, welcome back and um, I am going to do today just a little test piece because I want to check these colours. If you remember this one here, I'm sure you'll remember him, um, still a little bit damp in the middle so I'm not going to run my hand over the middle there, but this one is one of my favourite ever pours that I've done. So almost dry and I really like these colours. They're navy with the peachy colours. And then I really liked this one as well. With the turquoise and the peach and the brown and the little pops of this warm red. So I thought to myself, what would happen if I put those two colours together? What do we think? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the warm red from that one and the brown from that one and then those are these four colours here. So same as that but added the brown and the warm red from here. And I'm just going to see what happens. If it doesn't work then so be it. I'm just practicing on this little piece of card. And if it does work, if I like the colours then I'll do a big one. So I didn't want to waste a canvas so just practicing on my card. And look, I've been doing these cards for like a year and people are still asking me about them. There's links on my Australian Acrylic Pouring Group to Amazon and eBay. So go there and have a look for those links, please. People are private messaging me from all over the world, all hours of the day and night saying, where do you get your card? And I'm sorry, I'm just not answering them anymore. It's too much. It's been going on a year. I'm sure if you research you will find them, but I have got links for those that don't want to research or cannot find them. Right, silicone oil. Um, oh, this one, I've only put in half the amount of this. I'm just a bit worried that it might take over. So I've only got a little bit of that and I've made up the difference in my navy. So less, more. But the rest of them have got 50 grams of pouring medium, 50 grams of paint, uh, and so that's 600 grams for this size and I'm using my usual pouring medium 70% glue 30% water someone's asked me well a few people have asked me actually to do a, a video right from the beginning how to make up the pouring medium how to mix it in with the paints like a very basic video for beginners so does anybody want that let me know so because this one hasn't got much in it at all I'll just put two drops and then the others can have three except for the white when I did that really peachy looking painting, I might call her Peachy Keen. <laughs> She's very peachy. Um, I was really surprised at how much of the peachy orange colour came through. And it didn't really occur to me until later that I had started layering my cups with um, orange in the bottom. So you have to remember that what goes in first is going to come out last and that's going to be the colour that's sort of over the top of your pour. So I tend to start with either a white or a black, generally do. Uh, for some reason I started with orange in that pour and that's why I've got such an orange hue to the painting. I actually wouldn't mind doing those colours again, exactly the same, but changing the order and not starting with orange. I think it's just because I wanted to split my peachy colour up from my orange. I wanted to separate them. That's why I thought I'd start in the middle, but I start at the end, but it wasn't really a good option. Okay, let's start layering. We'll just do two layers of each. And I can have a little bit more of the navy because I've made more of that up, as I said. So make a thicker layer for that one. I really like how the navy and this peachy colour sit together. I'll show you the colours once I've flipped the cups over. And I really like the way the peach and the turquoise looks together so that's why I've got them together. And I've split the red and the turquoise up because those are going to make like a purpley tone which I mean I still may get that which won't be good because I'm not after purple but I've separated them with the brown. But a little bit you can see you know it pops through. I'm not going to cover the whole thing. Hopefully these colours will be nice together. 
I'm only going to do the one layer of this warm red. That's why I've only got half the amount. So I'll just do one layer in here and then it's not going to have another layer. I am a bit concerned that the white's going next to it. But it had to go somewhere. I don't want it next to the blues because of the purple shade. So hopefully it'll just go light orange instead of going pink because it's it's a warm red. It's like a an orangey red more than a bright red. So I'm hoping that that will be all right. Mm, I'll save that tiny bit left. Pop it in at the end of the brown maybe. Haven't really got much left at all. I don't think I've even got any left over. Sometimes I keep my blacks and my whites, even if there's just a little bit, and then I'll put them all into a cup and I'll save them for when I do need a little bit of black and white because you're always using black and white, aren't you? So put all my little scraps together and then I get a, a cup full, half a cup full. All right, so oh, back to the peach. This one's called Shrimp. It's one of the Global Special Edition colours. Um, I don't know that you can buy it anymore, so I've copied it and made my own colour. Oh, there's a new one that they've just released. It's called Coral, which is... I haven't seen it yet. I've seen it online and I managed to get three bottles online. So that should be arriving this week. And then um, I'm going to have a play with that because it looks really pretty. I think it's more, it's a darker, and it looks as if it's got slightly more of a pink tinge to it, whereas this one's got more of a beige undertone to it. So that'll be interesting. I'll do a pour with it when it arrives with my aqua and the navy. Let's see how it looks. I'm really enjoying doing these flip cups and balloon dips. So you can see a few more of those. And as I said in one of my previous videos, I want to do a really big one for myself. And I've come up with this new technique. Well, I think it's new. I don't know if anyone else has done it. New to me anyway, where I flip the cups over and then don't torch straight away. Uh, I tilt halfway and then torch. That way my cells don't run the risk of getting overstretched and too wobbly. And I found that works really well for me. So I'm going to continue doing that. I probably will still do a, the occasional pour where I flip over and then torch straight away. But um, I've just been really loving the results that I'm getting from this other way of doing it. I've only got a little bit of white left, so it's all going to go in here because this cup's just a little bit lower down. Not as much paint as the other one. Scrape, scrape, scrape. All right, that's it. That's all my paint used up. I have nothing left. Oh, interesting. <laughs> the brown and the turquoise is giving this slight greenish little look. Pretty. Okay, colours. We have white. And then I had in my cup, I had the deep sea, uh, deep space, the turquoise, oh, I can't get it right today, the deep space, which is my navy, and then shrimp, which is the peachy colour, and then my usual peacock, the pale aqua, and then the dark brown is the burnt umber. Any brand should work, you should be able to match the colours from any brand. Warm red. I think Liquitex Basics is probably the closest. They are a little bit thicker though, so uh, you have to add more pouring medium. Maybe one and a half parts pouring medium to one part Liquitex Basics. I think that would probably be a good ratio. Don't quote me on that, have a play with it, but I think that's probably what would work well. Okay. Um, are you going to release? Are you? Are you? Give you a second. I did spray the cups. And I did thin my white out. The white, I used 50 grams of white, 
sorry, 50 grams of pouring medium and 45 grams of white paint. I always reduce it now because I found that it's, it was splitting um, and curdling. So I've reduced the white and then I always add a tiny little splash of water as well. And that seems to have fixed the problem. It's just the, I think the thicker paint was making it split. It just couldn't stretch because it was too thick. So when I stretched it, it split. Let's do this. And the other one. Okay. Pop a little bit here. I've got no sides to worry about with the card. Still will just cover the corners. It just makes it so much easier. Pop those in the bin. All right, now remember, don't torch. So it looks different already. I can see the brown. And as I said before, the turquoise hitting the brown is making like a greenish color. Try not to lose all that brown off the side. So let's tilt a little bit first to fill up this biggest area. I like to do the biggest area first while I've got the most amount of paint that I'm going to have on the surface. See if you can cover that first. Now because I don't have any sides, it kind of makes this surface smaller. So I've probably got more paint than I would normally use because obviously I don't have to take into consideration those sides. But I still will be careful. I don't want to lose too much paint. And I am going to balloon dip, so same as I did with those other two paintings that I really liked. Bring the weight of the paint back a bit so I can move it into this corner. So if there's any areas that I really don't like, they will be the first to be balloon dipped. Like that. <laughs> okay, so I've covered half. And now it is torching time. Just run my finger under there to loosen that paint off. Okay, well, what do we think of the colours? It's hard to tell at the moment. <laughs> it's hard to tell, really, because when you do these flip cups, you look at the colours and you think, oh, that doesn't look very attractive. And it's not until you, your cells start popping up with the pretty colours underneath that you think, oh, yeah, that's pretty. you do the balloon dip and you bring even more colours up and you think, oh, that's even prettier. Let's just wait a sec. So that's going to go. Those are going to go. Those will be my first areas to dip. And these colours just may not work together. They really might not. And then I'll just stick to my other one. The big blue one is my favourite, favourite. So I'll no doubt be doing a big one like that for me. And you don't always have to have six or seven colours. You know, that one's got four colours and it is beautiful. I love it. Sometimes less is more. You don't have to run the risk of your colours or changing into other colours and mixing and making mud. Now just stick with some complementary colours, four colours, five colours, I think is a good way to do it. Now with your balloon dips, the other thing I've noticed, it's nicer to have more cells because if you dip into a blank area, you don't really get those defined petals. It's, the, it's dipping into a cell and then stretching that cell that gives you your petals. So if you're wanting to balloon dip, uh, I think it's a good idea to have a few extra cells. So 
that you can get those petals. Oops, too close there. Too close. Two little eyes and a nose. Did you see my skull the other day? Oh, that was hilarious. Uh, I looked back on the video and I could see him forming ages before I even noticed him. And then all of a sudden I saw him and I thought, oh my gosh, look at that. It was funny. All right, let's get to tilting. I'll go over this side first. I like to get this, this sides done before I go too much over the edge. stick around the other side bring my weight of the paint back again to where I want it to go it's looking a little bit purpley isn't it I don't think I like that warm red in here at all at all I must say it's a bit icky and I've got way too much paint Need to try and get rid of some of it. I think I'm going to try and get rid of some of that off there. Put my hand in the middle because I can with the cards. And just try and get some of that to go off the side. Not all of it because I want to keep some of that peachy colour. I think that will do. Well, it's not at all what I envisaged. I thought it would be literally a combination of those two, but once you start mixing your colours, everything changes, eh? Okay, so let's do some dipping. Definitely going to have one right in the middle. That's where I got too close and all those little baby cells popped up. When you get too close, you get your little caterpillars or your little rings of cells joining together. So, I have got my glove that's still left over from the other day. It's nice and squishy and soft. And I've also got a balloon, which is a little bit more firm. Not sure which is going to work better. I'm going to try the glove. I'm going to go right in the middle. And push down and go around in a circle and up nice and slowly. Oh, that's a pretty one. Look at all those little petals. And I managed to kill all the caterpillars in the meantime. Okay, uh, where else don't I like? This blob here. See the red and the turquoise? Yeah, they just they're just not complementary, are they? Reds and red and blue together make purple. I was kind of hoping it would avoid it. This side's pretty, but this one is a lot more purpley looking to me. So I'm gonna go over this one here and then I'm gonna whack him on the head too. I'm not gonna push down as hard because I don't want it as big. As that middle one. So the harder you push obviously the more surface area is going to be touching the paint because you're squashing your balloon flatter so you're going to get a bigger flower. If you just push down lightly you're going to get a smaller flower. Uh, the other thing I didn't like was that there so I'm not really going to get any petals there because there's no not really any cells around it. So I'm just probably going to get a squish and not really a petal. See how there's no petals in that one? Because there were no cells incorporated into it to stretch it. I'm just going to come a bit this way because I've gone off the card. I need to move over a little bit more towards me. 
that's better. Oh, there's my white. Yay. And this incorporated a couple of the cells from up here. So those have got the petals. So you can see how the petals are formed. So if you want lots of petals, make sure you've got a good amount of cells and you push your balloon into the cells. Uh, where else? Where else? Hmm. Kind of like this corner. Maybe I'll just do something in there and leave that corner of, of the peachy colour, hey? Round and round and back up. I like going round and round. Get more of a surface area. That one's pretty. So it's incorporated those peachy cells into the into the flower. I just like to wipe it off each time. I don't want to put mud back onto my, my painting. Okay, so I've got enough here. So I kind of need to balance it. I need sort of one here and then one down there. Maybe into this corner here where there's that little bit of brown. See that the red and the turquoise have gone brown and I don't like it. So I won't be using this colour scheme again. But it's nice to try out. Imagine if I'd made up all the paint to do a huge canvas in these colours. I'd be so disappointed. That's why it's good to have a little practice pause. Check your colours. See what works, see what doesn't like work. Check your consistency. Rightio, now where? I really like the size of these ones in the middle, so I'm not going to touch those. This is quite compact here, so I might go right in the middle of those actually and just break that up because they're little and they're a bit of a colony happening there. So, but nice big one I think, round and round, yeah, okay, I'll take that, some people might like these colours, it doesn't look bad, it's just uh, not what I want for my huge, well I don't know how huge it'll be, but for my bigger pour, alright, so happy with that, I've covered in pretty much all the areas that I don't like, um, mm, this one, I guess, here's the only one that I'm not real happy with. Kind of wish I'd made him a little bit bigger now. Maybe I'll go again with him. I'll go again. Oh, yes. That was worthwhile doing, wasn't it? That was good. Now I don't like the middle one as much. It's looking a bit dull. The others have got some lovely warm red coming through. This one hasn't got much here. But I'm worried that if I dip into him again, I might make him worse. So let's just leave him. You know, if, if you're 80% happy with something, just leave it. <laughs> if you're only 50% happy with it, well then you can sort of think, well, I'll take the risk. And if you're only 30% happy with it, then definitely go for it. Change it. Now I see people putting up pictures, photos of their paws going, oh, I don't know if I like it or not. Um, you know, do I keep it or scrape it? And you're the only one that can tell that, can give that answer. You have to be happy with your work. If you're unsure, if you only like it 30%, scrape it, do it again. I've done plenty, plenty of scrapes. And it's how I learn. Um, and yeah, it's how you improve. If you're not happy with something, scrape it, do it again. Learn from your mistakes. Do it again. Make a better one. And you will make a better one, for sure. Okay, so there it is. Don't need to take you down for a close-up. It's no masterpiece. Uh, so, hope you enjoyed that. Hope you've learned something anyway from colour combinations. I'll stick to my other one. This was the 
the pretty apricot and peach and turquoise and then this one it's not going to fit the whole thing in but pretty 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 so this is the one i'll do in a bigger one okay so thanks for watching and uh, i'll see you for the next one bye for now